The 1950s were an important decade for Glamorgan County Cricket Club as they built on the success of winning the county championship in 1948. I think 1948 was one of the great turning points, if not the greatest, in Glamorgan's history in first class cricket and also in Welsh sport. When the season was over, I went to, they had some celebration dinners, as you would, as you would expect, you know, and I was invited and they got whatever they got, it was not a lot, and I think I was given a cheque for £10, which was a lot of money in those days. But you know, and I think that more or less set up the way I felt about Glamorgan from that day until the end of my career. I thought, if they're able or um, generous enough to ask me to go to that sort of dinner, I'd take no part in the cricket. And uh, th that really set me up as Feel, feeling like I do and I've always felt about playing for Glamorgan. That's, it's a small act but it was a great act of uh, making or creating team spirit if you like. In 1951 they defeated the South Africans at Swansea and during the decade a number of new faces emerged under the captaincy of Wolf Wooler. These players included Don Shepherd, Peter Walker, Alan Jones and Tony Lewis. I think that just after the war Second World War. I was born in '38, so uh, it was a time I think when you went to Neath Grammar School, where I went to school, and basically they threw you a rugby ball and tested your voice. That was about it. It was you know we played uh, rugby in the winter and, and cricket in the summer, but we were not allowed to play association football or soccer. Uh, that was that was banned. That was a no good. We played rugby and cricket on the, on, on the road, and, uh, but somebody's father knocked up some wooden stumps and uh, we used to have test matches against the next row in, in the summer holidays, of course, school holidays, they'd gone all day and we'd be five day test matches. And if it rained then we'd go indoor and play uh, with a miniature bat and a miniature stumps uh, and a marble and all the fielders were meticulously placed, uh, but they were cigarette carts. But, and, and you had to hit the ball, but you couldn't hit the ball in the air, uh, indoors, because you might break something. Sport was very important because um, most of the people in, in the village never had um, regular jobs. They used to work in, in the pits and uh, if I had a chance to play professional cricket, it was an ambition. Uh, at a very young age I used to go down to St Helens with my father to watch Glamorgan play and I remember watching uh, Alan Watkins uh, sitting at the pavilion waiting to go into bat and uh, hopefully one day I could be doing that but never uh, in my wildest, wildest dream that I thought that I would be uh, one day opening the batting for Glamorgan. Well most of the 1948 uh, uh, championship winners were still playing and I think you have to remember that two or three of them had terrible times during the war. I mean Wilf was one Len Munster was another, uh, Mr. Spence, Les Spence used to run the club, the awful time, so you had to sit back and listen and, and admire them and just the fact that they'd come through those sort of things and they were all in their own way characters, you know. I, I think I probably owed as much to Hayden Davis as to anybody, you know, he's behind the wicket, he's a very, very bright, intelligent man. And Willie Jones was uh, uh, maybe a... a a bag of nerves until he'd had a couple of pints, you know, and then it, uh, Saturday night they'd be talking who was the greatest kicker of a rugby ball in the world. It was, I think it was Wilf, Willie and Jim Sullivan, I think, <laughs> three, three names mentioned. So Willie was certainly one. Uh, Hayden, as, as I say, Alan Watkins, they were all a fount of knowledge, you know, they were, they were a fantastic group of chaps, I think, you know, and uh, they just put up what, whatever was a befell them, you know, the travelling, as you can imagine, in those days, the hotels were, you know, you might as well take your own towel, take your own soap, whatever it was, it's just, it was done, because most of them had been uh, through, na if not the war, it was through national service, and, you know, everybody knew what some sort of hardship was. <laughs> hey, hey, well, I travelled with Hayden in my young days in the first team, and uh, Hayden, Hayden, uh, Socialised a fair bit, let me put it that way, and uh, sometimes, uh, the, one of the early times, because we were playing the last day at Cardiff Arms Park at this particular match, and by now I was starting to get a regular in the first team. We're now going into the, still in the 50s here, um, 
uh, Hayden, uh, we, we came off the field, we'd been fielding all day, and the next match was in Sheffield. No motorways then, narrow A roads. And so Will said, well, you better travel with Hayden again. All right. And so we drove off, and we'd gone about only the other side of Newport, and he said to me, look, I tell you what, you better drive. I just want to think about wicket keeping, he said to me. <laughs> We stopped outside Newport, beyond Caerphilly, uh, and beyond uh, Kyalian as well. And he went into this pub, he said, I won't be long. I'm a young, keen cricketer. I, you know, I want to sleep, I want to make sure I'm fit and well. So <laughs> quarter past three in the morning, I'm now still sitting in the car, and we set off for Sheffield. We, uh, we got there half an hour before the start of play. Now that's unthinkable these days, but it was normal life. For some. What are your memories of your first game in 1955? Well, I remember being out first ball. Um, it was a Cardiff House Park, and uh, the pitch, to say it took spin would be a slight understatement, I think. And I was LBW, the ball was bowled by Jack Walsh, left arm, leg breaks, googlies, and he just bowled the ball to second slips. I thought it was so wide, I can't believe it. That sign just sort of padded up, but I didn't realise that he turned the ball square and it hit me under the knee and I was out first ball. Or it was Leicestershire, I remember Wilford Wooler saying in the dressing room, the, the old dressing room at Cardiff Arms Park was just a hole in the wall, so it's just a window. And he said, just to take a look out there, Tony, he said, write down all their names and catch up with the blighters one by buddy one. <laughs> so I spent the rest of my life chasing these guys around, trying to get some runs against them. Well, there were only two ways you could weigh up Will. Either you liked him or you hated him. I was in the first lot. I thought he, he always used to say to me that he acted in loco parentis about me. It was the only two words of Latin he knew, I'm sure of that. Um, well, he's always pretty positive. He knew his cricket well. He was always right, even when he wasn't. And that made him a bit of a character, really, because he was, uh, you know, he went to war every day, and yet he was the first in the bar in the evening buying the opposition a, a glass of beer. I wouldn't say he was born with patience, but he was... Uh, he, we, we all remember that he'd been through a lousy war, and he'd started late. I, I reckon he played for, for 15 years after, after he came back. He was, he was over 50 when he finished. He 51, I remember, he was in the second team. So, Captain Glamorgan's second team. Amazing fitness. and uh, I think his strength was, was something that just permeated everything in Glamorgan in those days. Uh, I think I've probably told you the story before now about Lords when <laughs> John Dews was playing and John was the great white hope and uh, left-hander and played on the whole of Lords, no, no ropes, nothing, you know, and, uh, well, every field was the same, could run five at the Oval, and uh, John was finding the edge and finding the edge, and Wilf was getting wilder and wilder and more and more upset. I was bowling from the pavilion end, John was obviously at the, uh, the, the opposite end, and Wilf put everybody behind the bat, and, I, and he said to me, except Wilf, he stood there, where well, he could have a word with the batsman, I suspect, you know. And he said, whatever you do, don't pitch the ball up. Well, of course, the next one was up there, and John leant on it, went down it, right into the corner of the visitor's dressing room, down, the, down there, there's a little slope on the ground, and it stopped there. And Wilf looked down and suddenly realised he is the one who'd have to run. And off he went, down the ground, got the ball, came back, they ran four or five, whatever it was, and as he passed me, he said, Shepherd, you must be the dullest. Who's ever played for Glamorgan? <laughs> I thought, hello, it was too early. You know?